What's going on you guys? Theo here with the big review back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video and today is the official launch day for the 512 update and we are going to be going ahead and breaking it all down in today's video but before we do all that make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. We're going to be talking about the baseball Vanessa roulette, the new bingo game, the new free fest fighter along with the awakening pass to come along with him so let's go ahead and get into all of this. So first thing Things first, I want to go ahead and start out with the baseball Vanessa roulette, and we had talked about this yesterday. We had had a pretty good idea of what we were going to be looking at here, and lo and behold, pretty much exactly what we have come to expect. Basically, we were going to be able to have two weeks with this event to go ahead and try and farm as many souls and as many memories for baseball Vanessa as possible. Now, this character, for those of you who are wondering and unfamiliar, she has been in the game for quite a while. This character is actually pretty darn good overall. The reason being is she's actually a very good championship tune still to this day. And really, with Baseball Vanessa, the biggest thing with her in PvE is going to be the fact that she is a purple attack type. So being that she is a purple attack type, she's going to be very good for things such as high-level RHD whenever you need that purple attack type team. So that is going to be kind of her claim to fame there. However, she does have other isolated uses in PvE, such as the fact that she does have chill on her kit. So that is going to help her against specific things in PvE where you would need the chill damage, but overall she's just a solid little character. She's not going to be anything that is going to be game breaking. I would say she's kind of in that mid tier when it comes to PvE where she's not really going to see a whole lot of versatility, but she is going to be a very good starter character if you're somebody that is new to the game and has a very thin roster. I would definitely recommend her to those types of players. If you're somebody who's a veteran, chances are you already have her, and therefore you're not going to really need this, but for those of you who are wondering what you should be doing with your souls, with your memories, so on and so forth, because if you go ahead and you take a look at the craft menu, the way that you're going to be able to pick her up isn't going to be just isolated to the wheel itself. You can actually go ahead and craft her memories here as well, so that's very, very cool that you can do that with those souls that you're able to obtain from that roulette wheel. And you can also see here that you'll also be able to get her battle card. So overall, pretty decent. I would say that it depends on what you want to do and where you're at in the game, though, as far as what you're going to do with these souls. Me, personally, I always like to use my souls from these roulettes for these fest characters, as I've said for months now, on the tokens in the exchange shop for the unified banner. That's just my preference, especially if it's a character that I don't plan on using, which unfortunately in the case of Baseball Vanessa, I'm not planning on using her for anything really, so it's up to you guys what you want to do. You can also kind of bank these memories as well that you can craft, or if you get lucky enough to get them on the wheel itself, you can bank those and use those for dimensional invites, for maybe for your Seven Deadly Sins characters, or whatever the case may be, that's up to you, because you do have that option. So it's up to you guys on what you want to do with this, but you do have a couple of options available to you. Now one other thing that is worth mentioning with this event, and like I mentioned, it is going to be around for two weeks, but you're also going to be able to get tickets for this with those ads down there for free four times a day, so make sure you do that. But on top of that, you're actually going to be able to go up to your event tab, and you'll see here that you're actually able to get a total of six more roulette tickets for doing these missions. So all you've got to do is use the secret shop one time, clear the weekly battle card dungeon one time, and play the epic quest one time a day, and you'll be able to get six of those. So pretty darn good overall, I would say. So make sure you guys aren't forgetting that these are here. Sometimes I've heard in my comments that people forget that these are even a thing until about halfway through these events. So there's your reminder that that is going to be there for you. So that is going to be the roulette. Not too shabby. It's up to you guys on what you want to do with these. Like I said, you have a couple different options. You can either bank those memories for dimensional invites or to build her up, in which case I do definitely recommend doing so if you are in need of a good purple attack type or you're new to the game and just need a good character for PvE in general because she is a pretty decent little tune. And then if you're somebody that's more in the veteran camp, then you can kind of just go ahead and bank these souls and exchange them out for 
purple dust to go ahead and get your tokens for your unified banner and those are kind of your different options there so that is going to be the roulette next up we are going to go ahead and move on now to everyone i know why they're here i know you're excited we're gonna break some gourds guys let's break these gourds this is exciting. All right, I might I might be a little bit overselling this, but it is a Break the Gourd event, and it is going to be featuring Baseball Vanessa. So as we can see here, this is going to be the event. We'll go ahead and do a quick run, but you can do it once a day. You'll be able to get these little packages down here that are going to have your Awakened Tier 1 through 3 XP capsules. These are a mystery box, so going to be something to where if you need specific ones, well, you're not going to be able to just pick what you want, which we've pretty much come to expect. For clearing it for the first time, you'll also get a few rubies, but you'll also get some gold here for each clear. So we'll go ahead and we'll run through this one time and see what it's like. But, you know, I know that everybody has really been excited to be breaking gourds in King of Fighters All-Star, especially with a character as beautiful as Vanessa here. So that, that wait, is that a gourd? That's not a gourd. That's a baseball. Hold on. I, I've been lied to. Guys, we've been duped. This ain't right. Netmarble, what are you doing? What do gourds look like in your neck of the woods? Hold on. Am I? Is this real life? I was promised gourds. Oh, man. Zero out of five. Do not recommend. There are no gourds in this mode. How dare they? All right, joking aside, there's our reward. So you're getting five boxes there for those Awakening XP caps. So that's something, I guess. But yeah, guys, so just make sure you do that once a day. It's looking like that's going to be a pretty easy thing to get through. Just spam your skills. It's not a time waster. So not anything too exciting to look at there. I feel lied to. Where are my gourds? I was promised gourds. Anyway, we'll move on now to the main event here. That's going to be the bingo game. And of course, the newest Fest Fighter added into the pool. Is he any good? Is this bingo game any good? Well, let's go ahead and figure that out. So as you guys can see here, this is going to be your bingo game. And we're going to have this sitting around here and have the time enough to get this done in 14 days. So it shouldn't be anything too major. I went through these earlier and none of these should be anything that is going to hang you up for any considerable amount of time. So this will be an easy event to get through so basically as you can see the layout of it and all the different prizes here are pretty much what we've come to expect from this game with these bingo events you're going to get some extra rubies you're going to get a bunch of extra caps and then you're also going to be able to get the main items down here of interest which is really just going to boil down to you're going to be able to get these awakened tier 4 xp capsules which are pretty nice i will admit you get 30 of them so again if you have issues getting your xp capsules for your awakening tier well, there's another option. Then we also have these two guys here. Yes, this is two of these that you get, and they are selection boxes. This is, of course, going to include your normal plus imprint stones. So pretty nice that they did this. Again, I always recommend this guy here, but there are other options. But yeah, these guys here, pretty decent if you're a new player. Gives you some options for imprint stones since it's very tough for new players to get the R stones so very nice that those are there. You also are going to be able to get 20 of the rare enhancement hammers, which is always welcome. And then we get to the actual character himself, which is going to be the 2000 Lin. Is he any good or is he just a glorified gold border character? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. So with Lin here, he is going to be a green balance type, and he is also going to increase green element fighters attack by 40% and decrease his his damage received from red element enemies by 15%. So not anything too special on the leadership skill or the overall typing. I am very kind of disappointed that being that he is going to be a poison based character, the one major area currently in the game that you would want to bring him into, which is Immortal Vulcan. Vulcan is actually going to be having the element advantage against green type characters. So unfortunately, he may or may not be of much use there. We'll have to wait to see if he can actually get through that and make a dent there. But if you take a look at his cores and his skills, it does seem as though he might actually be able to put in some amount of work in that mode. As you can tell here, these are going to be his cores. And is going through here. 
He is going to have a 30% increase to his poison attack damage, which is very nice when we get to the skills. He's going to have a 15% power charge rate increase, which is very nice, but unfortunately he does have a 5 PG finisher with that card, which we'll get to. And then we get into his exclusive cores. So he's going to gain super armor for 3 seconds when he's attacked on a cooldown of 15 seconds, and increase his penetration by 150 for 4 seconds for each attack that's stacks up to five. So breaking this guy down here, basically he is going to have that super armor core that is going to be nice for a save. So if he is getting attacked, then he's going to be able to get that super armor and potentially break the combo and help himself out. And then that penetration increase is very similar to characters such as Lady Zero or Meliodas who have kind of similar penetration increases that stack up to five. Unfortunately, his is markedly weaker, being at 150 per, whereas theirs are, I believe, off the top of my head, 300 and 400, respectively, with Lady Zero having the 400. So, overall, not a bad core, but it is a bit lacking, unfortunately. And then we get to his final core here, which is going to decrease the target's attack speed and movement speed by 15% for 5 seconds when attacking a poisoned enemy on a cooldown of 15 seconds, and when attacked by a poisoned enemy, he's going to have a 50% chance to explode the poison damage equal to two times the remaining poison damage on the attacker and remove the poison so overall he has poison explosion which is nice on a 50 percent chance which being the fact that he is going to have numerous resets on his source of poison on his skills that's actually pretty decent i would say that's probably the best thing about his kit besides the resets. But speaking of resets, let's get into his skills and then we'll kind of talk about our overall thoughts here. But he's going to, on his S1, have decreased damage received by 80% for 3 seconds with a 100% chance to reset the cooldown of his S2. And on his S2, he is going to increase attack by 29% for 7 seconds while also dealing venom damage to the target for 8 seconds upon landing a skill. Now, for those of you who do not know what venom damage is it's actually pretty darn good it's going to deal poison damage equal to 35 percent of attack every one second and then decrease the power charge rate of the opponent by 80 percent so venom is actually a very good second tier dot we've talked about that in our dot guide that we did a while back but Venom is actually very underrepresented, but very, very good. And then finally, on his S3, he is going to have Super Armor for 3 seconds when using a skill, and then he's going to have another 100% chance to reset his S2. So, as you can see here, basically, what his gimmick is, is he is going to have 100% chance to reset his S2, which is his source of Venom, on two of his three skills. So, very cool that he has that. That Venom damage, of course, is going to apply Poison, which is then going to feed his cores very well. So, I do think that this character, you can tell what they were going for with him. Do I think he is anything super special? Not particularly, and there's a couple reasons why. I think that this character could have been very strong if they would have changed a few things around. Now, one big thing that really holds him back is going to be the fact that this is a 5 PG finisher. However, it is a very long animation. I think I timed it at around 9 seconds or so. So a 9 second long finisher generally would mean that a character has some viability. However, unfortunately, again, being the fact that it is going to be a 5 PG that's just not great. And to be honest with you, his overall kit does seem to be lacking. This is a character that I could have just as easily seen being a gold border character. And that isn't me trying to knock him because there are very, very good gold border characters out there. I just really don't think that this is a character that has a whole lot of uses currently in the game. So overall, we'll have to wait and see. We'll eventually have him in our hands because he is going to be a character we get for free and we'll be able to try him out. We might even have him, I believe, timing-wise, we should be able to at least get him, but not the card before Vulcan goes away because Vulcan is the newest immortal with the reset. So we'll be able to try him out in there, but I'm kind of... 
I'm kind of hesitant to say that he's going to make much of a mark in that mode, and to be honest, beyond that, Poison just doesn't actually get called for all that much. And being that he is a green balance, again, doesn't get called for all that much. And his leadership skill is just kind of whatever. So there are much better green leaders out there, so take it for what you will. But that's going to be Lin. We will have him for free within the next week, and we'll be able to test him out and see what he's like. But the talking points don't stop there with Lin because we have one more thing that we need to talk about here, and that is going to be this newest awakening pass that we have because there's quite a bit to go over here, and there's some pretty interesting implications that come from this. So let's go ahead and break this down real quick. Now, as always with these passes, we have two different tiers. We either have the dolphin or we have the whale package, and we'll start out with the dolphin package. So this dolphin package, not going to lie to you guys, is actually pretty decent. You get 400 rubies. You're going to get that multi for the unified banner, and then you're also going to get a memory and 600 souls for Lin. So this is actually pretty decent overall, I would say, because basically this goes back to what we talked about with that BB Vanessa roulette where you can actually get a memory to use for dimensional invites if you want to do that. And then you also get a whopping 600 souls, and these are fest souls. So you can actually get quite a bit of purple dust with this, or you can go ahead and use it on your Lin. My recommendation, if this amount is just to go with the purple dust, because you can just use generic souls if you have enough to awake or level him up if you need to. I wouldn't even bother using these just to level him up. I do that with all of my fest characters in general, though. I don't generally use their actual souls. I actually just go ahead and parlay the actual souls into those tokens. That's something that I've always done, but it's up to you guys, your prerogative on that. But I do think that for $4.99, this is another valuable little pass. I do think that there is quite a bit of value here. And if you are somebody that doesn't mind spending just a tad on the game, this is probably a pretty good little deal. Now, as far as the whale one, this is where it gets a little interesting, right? So, basically for $50, the price of a new video game, well, just a little bit under, but basically for the price of a new video game, instead of getting, you know, Resident Evil Village or new Pokemon Snap or any of the new games that have come out recently that are really good, you can have all this stuff to unlock stuff for your Lin, right? You can have a bunch of stones that are going to be attack stones that are going to give you boost to your poison damage for your green balance type characters. You can have a bunch of hammers. You can have a bunch of awakening tier XP capsules and so on and so forth. And kidding aside, I think that this thing is not really, in my opinion, worth it. Now, people might think that there's value here just based solely upon the fact that you get the stones, right? Because you do get a full set of stones. And that's pretty cool. However, it is only for the green balance characters. So it's going to be good for your Lin, basically. It's only going to be useful for characters that have poison damage, really. So while I would like to say that this is something that I would recommend, I just can't do it. Now, the most interesting thing to come from this is the fact that we do get four memories for this character, which is really cool. You can basically get him, if you couple this along with the one that you get on the dolphin one, if you couple those, then you're basically going to be able to get Lin to Awakening level four, which is really cool, I suppose, but it doesn't stop there with the Lin help, because if we take a look here, and we'll kind of piggyback off of the talk about this pass with this part, but if we go in here, we go up to our craft menu you're going to see that you're actually going to be able to craft his memories as well and now this is going to use the hall of element memory coins my recommendation on this because this if you did not know if you have not looked I will show you guys so you are aware, so you know why I'm saying not to do this. This is using the same coins that you would use here for these memories. So in my opinion, I would not be doing this with those. I do not think or believe that this character is going to be worth breaking your bank on your Hall of Elements coins for these memories. However, if you are somebody that is a fan of Lin, or you're somebody that just needs a character to help you with Immortal Vulcan potentially, although I would kind of wait and see on that one because we're still not sure how he will perform there in general again because Vulcan has the element advantage. Have to wait and see so people can actually get their hands on this character before we can make that call. 
but I would not recommend using your Hall of Element coins on here unless you're somebody that just doesn't have memories that they're looking for anymore because as we all know, Hall of Elements does reset and you may end up with a memory you need there monthly, but hey, it's up to you guys at that point. You guys know better than I do what you need as far as memories go, but you can get up to two of those, so it'll cost you 4,000 of those coins total to do that. And overall, I think that if you want to build up this character, then this is 100% worth it, especially considering the fact that this character is not on the unified banner. So really, if you're going to want to build him up, this is going to be your only option. I see what you did there, Netmarble. Ha ha, very sneaky. But for anybody else, I do not think this is worth it. If this would have been an attack circle stone that, or attack square stone or hexagon stone selector box, that would have been one thing for each one of these, but unfortunately that is not the case. So overall, while I do think that this is a promising feature for the future, I would like to see them do this with future characters that are better because this could have easily been a boss syndrome pass or something like that. They could have done that for us and maybe given us some of the BS generic memories in here or something like that. That would have been really, really cool, Netmarble. Please watch this video. Please listen to me. But I digress. This is what we got. And it's okay. But I do recommend the $5 one. So that's something I do recommend. So anyway, guys, I believe that is going to be all new updates. Like I said, we're going to have to wait and see with Alin. We'll get our hands on him here in the next week and be able to build him up and see what he's like. But for now, he is not looking like he is anything super special. But that is going to be today's video, you all. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the new character, of all these new modes, all these new events. Are you as disappointed as me that we don't have gourds? But... Let me know in the comments section what your opinions are. If you haven't already done so and you're new here, smash that like button and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.